Hey, hey, and welcome back to the next big thing. And I am extremely excited about this particular episode and a bit in awe, I must confess, because joining me today is a multi Grammy winning music composer, performer, and producer. Uh, he works in the ambient space, world music space, and has also been described as the boss of ambient music. I think I got, I think I, I, I didn't get the exact word, but he has been a champion in that space. So please welcome, highly acclaimed and accomplished all the way from Connecticut, Paul Abderinos. Thank you for joining the show. Oh, thank you, Sri Ram. Wonderful to be here. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> uh, I'm glad, I like I'm glad. that, the, the boss of ambient music. That's great. <laughs> we'll go with that. Actually, it's actually one of the giants of ambient music. Giants, that, sorry. That's but, right. but that's because I'm 6'4", so I'm actually very <laughs> tall. So I'm literally a giant because a lot yes. of the guys in ambient are shorter. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Giant. But, uh, but so a stalwart in, in more ways than one. Uh, so thank you for being on the show. It's a real privilege to have you, I must say. Oh, my pleasure. It's great to be with you. Excellent. Okay, before we get into it, and there's so much to talk about, and as you know, I just joined the, the Recording Academy as, as a voting member about two, three months ago. Uh, it's super exciting. So I, I can't wait to discuss a lot about the Grammys and your wonderful experiences. But before we do that, uh, we have to follow tradition on the next big thing. And uh, as you know, uh, every guest that comes on the next big thing kicks things off by sharing two things about themselves. And they can be in any order, but one of them is fact and one of them is fiction. And you have to put on your best poker face and try to confuse me. Try your best. I'll try my best. So it's a little known fact that I am actually a world-class golfer. I have a handicap. I'm able to play under par. Wow. And, oh, yeah. It's just a fa fabulous secret life that I have golfer and you have a handicap and that is under par okay oh yeah it's quite amazing then the other thing about me is um that i started doing yoga three hours a day when i was uh 14 years old back in uh, 73 1973 is when you started doing yoga for three hours a day yeah, and sometimes more. And my my family thought I was I'd lost my mind, and they 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 didn't know what to do with me. It was it wow. was quite a crisis in the home front. <laughs> well, well, the truth was that you were the one who was more realized. <laughs> okay, all but, right. Okay, let's go with. I don't know which one's which because I must say, Paul, that this is harder than I thought. I thought you were going to give me one obvious fact. I don't know which one's which. I really don't. <laughs> and. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been on a roll. Like I've been getting it right every single time last few times. So, but you've really challenged me here. So a uh, question is, are you a golfer with a, a, a reasonable handicap, a, an under par handicap? And, um, or did you start doing yoga in 1973 for three hours a day? It's a really tough one. I must say there's a bit of a Greg Norman resemblance. <laughs> a, bit, a bit a bit so ah, I, I, I see yeah right <laughs> you see the swing coming in yeah oh look at that lefty too lefty. oh lefty too oh yeah oh okay nothing I, ordinary for me oh no that's it oh god paul i don't know if you're throwing a curveball here or not it's really different and you know i even i even use it to win money because you know i play with some guys that they think oh he's just a musician how can he yeah, be any yeah, good yeah. So yeah. I, I miss a few shots and then I say, hey, you know, why don't we play for a hundred dollars a hole this time? Just, you know, because you, you're nice guys. You look like you could use some money, well, yep. I, you know, but then, oh, I the boom. Then I start yeah. bringing the big games. Oh, That's and then it. they look on their face. They're like, That's it. oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. OK, I know where I'm going with this. Uh, given your love for, for yoga, for spirituality, for Amma, um, I think it is a fact that you started yoga in 1973, doing it for three hours a day. And the golf was something you made up very well, I must say. You had me confused for a while there. Oh, Am I right? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, because I tried to be a good golfer for many years and I was dreadful oh. at it. I, yeah, I mean, 
you know, I got a few pars here and there, but I just couldn't get the kind of consistency that uh, would make it really enjoyable. Right. And, and then I just didn't have, when I my second daughter was born, I didn't have the time to practice. Yeah. And, you know, it takes yeah. a lot of time to to practice and to play around. It takes like yeah. five hours, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, but I, I didn't, I do enjoy it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a very zen game because, you know, yeah. you're playing against yourself. You know, yes, yes. Yeah, you know, you're playing against your own uh equilibrium. You know, yeah. can you can you stay centered and peaceful? But yeah, I had a feeling you'd guess that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good, sorry. good on you. You you almost had me, and, and that was that was fairly good. That was fairly good. So I must say, <laughs> the golf has an interesting uh, thing. I mean, uh, you know, I like that the number eighteen has spiritual significance, right? I mean, they say you know, eighteen chapters in the Gita, for example, yeah. and. Right. Uh, and interestingly, there's 18 holes in, in golf. So, you know, I, I found that parallel uh, very interesting. Uh, someone we, I mean, we have every weekend, we have a Gita class where we, we get together and we discuss uh, the great uh, scripture. And um, somebody just come from playing golf. So we were talking about uh, similarities. Nice. But great, great stuff. So yoga at 1973, three hours a day. I mean, that's fantastic. How did, how did that happen? Well, it was a very, very fortuitous sequence of events. Uh, it started with uh, Mahavishnu John McLaughlin, the great jazz fusion guitarist and band. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard his music and my, my, I had a rock band at that time and my friend brought over the Inner Mounting Flame album and put it on the record player, the vinyl record player. And it started, and I said, what is that? What is that noise? And he said, he said, wait, wait a minute. Just, just wait a minute. And so I'm listening, I'm listening. And all of a sudden, it hit me. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is really cool. What is he doing? It's like, I've never heard anything like that before. Yeah, yeah. And I just became a huge fan of his. And then, amazingly, his guru, Sri Chinmoy from Bengal, uh, India, uh, uh, was, living, was living in Queens, New York, and... Uh, Wow. coming to Norwalk, Connecticut, about yeah. 20 minutes from my house, my childhood house, every yeah. Saturday morning to give yeah. meditations. Wow. So John McLaughlin's guru, Carlos Santana's guru, was coming yeah. to Norwalk, Connecticut. So I immediately said, oh, I'm going to, I'm there. Yeah. And so I yeah. became, you know, part of the the, the satsang. And I, yeah. I, you know, I, I studied yeah. Uh, the, the bhakti yoga with him and, and wow. it was very beautiful and so that tied in with the music because yeah. in the music i could hear the the voice of god and i could feel that oneness that that yeah. pure connection that i was longing for yeah. you know i was uh very typically troubled teenager mm. too mm. emotional too shy mm. uh, misanthropic and you know, I was hitting all the buttons, you know, of teenage mm. difficulty. Mm. But the music made sense to me. And in the music, I found my soul and my passion and my path. And I saw that music is actually a spiritual path. You know, the study of music mm. is a study of yoga because mm. you're 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 trying to reach that oneness with mm. Sarasvati, you know, to, to become a pure channel mm. so that goddess can just play through you. And use you as an instrument mm. so it was it was such a blessed time and you know in music that period the 70s the mid 70s especially was mm. so rich mm. you know you had chick korea in uh you had john mclaughlin you had wayne shorter and weather report and return to forever and oh it was just such an exciting time to yeah. be in, involved in music because yeah, yes. no one no one had ever heard stuff like this before yes, they, they yes, were yeah. jazz elements rock elements classical yeah. elements merging it all together you know stupendous virtuosity and musicianship yeah, yeah. just off the charts so yes, yes. what an inspiring time i mean you know just yes. uh, such fertile ground you know to, to grow in Fantastic, yeah. and it's it's great to see John McLaughlin still touring. He's doing Shakti, yeah. Shakti uh, with uh, with a whole heap of other fantastic musicians, and um, it was Shankar, wonderful Shankar. to see him finally win a Grammy Award a couple of years ago. You know, oh. which uh, if anybody should get many, it would John. be him. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's uh, and a sweet guy. John is a is a beautiful soul, yeah. and he's he's a very pure 
channel of of yeah. uh, Shakti. He really is. He, he's yeah, a yeah. very cool very cool guy very yeah. unassuming you meet him and he's just like you know just very down to earth and yeah <laughs> that's fantastic i mean i haven't met uh, john but i've met uh, one of his collaborators frequent collaborators and I mean, i've worked with uh, shankar mahadevan who is the vocalist currently for yeah Shakti nice Group. and nice. um he's a he's a legend in his own right in india yeah and so he uh for a brief uh, period you know we were very much so i, I performed with him he released my first album and oh, nice. Shank- Shankar did yeah and um, so he's, he's been a mentor a guru a friend and I performed That's with great. him about four years ago as well here in Melbourne nice and um, nice. so one- wonderful wonderful to know great musicians okay fantastic so that was then and uh, I'm guessing you're not able to clock three hours of yoga these days or <laughs> <laughs> no well you know I I always endeavor throughout the day to do some part of my sadhana whether it's yeah. uh, chanting chanting my mantra yeah or um some type of yogic stretching you know yeah. evening out the physical energies yeah um mostly you know what you can do with daily life is your mantra you know because you could be doing the dishes you could be uh mm-hmm. taking care of your daughter you can keep your mantra going you know yeah. it's pretty easy to do yeah. and i try to chant my mantra when i'm sleeping you know it's yeah. it's a constant um because it's a it's a guru ma- mantra it's ama gave me this mantra personally yes. so wow wow when i'm chanting my guru mantra i'm invoking yeah. ama so it's yeah. it's not just I mean, mantras are very powerful on their own, but when they're given by a Satguru, yes, yes, it's a whole other level of it's power. A whole other level, hundred percent. Whole other level, yeah. And you know, they ask you, well, who is your deity? You know, when you go for mantra uh, initiation, you say, who is your deity? And, mm-hmm. and I say, well, my deity is Jesus, Lord Jesus, because mm-hmm. I've had um, some beautiful darshans of the mm-hmm. Lord Jesus in my life. Yeah, yeah. And they said, oh, no problem. <laughs> they have a they have a mantra for, for, for that. For yeah, yeah. They yeah. Have a mantra. And I was like, oh, this is great. Yeah. You gotta yeah. love the whole Indian tra- to tradition because the Hindu tradition, because it's yes. actually so inclusive. Yes. I, I love that story about the young man who a young boy he comes to his father, he says, Father, I am rejecting all the Vedas and the Sanskrit and all the traditions. I am an atheist. And the father says, Oh, that's very good, my son. You have decided to embrace the path of the atheist. <laughs> you know, also, a path. It's another, it's another yoga. It's, it's like, another. It's another yoga. Wow. Well, it's said. another yoga. Yeah. Well it's going to lead you somewhere, yeah. not where you think it's going to lead yeah. you, probably, yeah. but it's going to lead. By you. all means, walk that path. And... Yeah, walk that path because the father knows. Yeah. What really matters is commitment, mm. devotion, right? Mm. In. Well, we could, we'll address this later on about, you know, what does it take to succeed? What does it take to, you know, to mm. realize your vision, your your highest good? Mm. It takes commitment. It takes devotion and mm. constancy. You have to show up. Yeah. You have to show up. Yep. Yep. Mm, very I've interesting. Seen a lot, I've seen a lot of people come and go in this business, much more talented than me. Mm-hmm. When I was in high school, mm. I had many friends many friends that were so much more talented than me there was a great crop of musicians in my my county uh, just amazing talent and they they were all way up here and i was down here i was just struggling to just you know play the notes and learn the song or whatever but they're just you know they're making art none of them ever did anything because they didn't have that resiliency to weather rejection and failure yeah yeah because you know i was brought up with a by a, an immigrant from greece a hard-working engineer who mm. didn't expect success mm. he expected to work hard that's all he expected <laughs> if wow. he got some success that's a good that expectation was, that was he a won't, boon he won't be boon. disappointed often <laughs> well yeah well if you got some success it's a icing on the cake it's a blessing yeah. you see because you're not expecting it yeah yeah, yeah. expectations yeah. are a big problem in life but if you have expectations like uh, in yeah. a relationship or in a work it can be devastating because you know the goddess the goddess does fulfill boons and fulfill mm. desires but it may not be when and how you no. are expecting 
it yeah. may come in a very different way and you may not even see it until later yeah. so i'm a big big uh, uh teacher of constancy follow through devotion hard work 97 mm. percent perspiration three percent mm. inspiration mm. you know I, i'm doing the last um i've had some free time because i finished my big album for the year and um grammy season isn't wide open right now so i've been making tracks for tv you know I, right. I i i have thousands of tracks in a tv library and they get played on hundreds of different tv shows all the time 24 7 all around the world it's fun it's a nice little side which 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 tv shows paul i, I should check them out uh anything you name it i've been on it pretty right. much all the reality tv shows the kardashians and the all that stuff and the survivor and the and, and what are they what are they generally stuff. playing from which, which well it's just the background music you know like when you hear like there's some tension music in the background yeah, yeah, yeah. that's often that's often me and my buddies that do that kind of music so it's composed it's, for that for that or is it no no it's body of no words? no it's composed for library Right. So the latest thing, the last 15, 20 years has been a move away from original composers and towards library work because uh -huh. Uh -huh. it's much less expensive for the producers and it's much quicker. Mm. So mm. Mm. they say, oh, we need some medium tension, ambient type music, <laughs> some pulsing, duh, 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 and you know, and so they go into my catalog. I've got hundreds of those pieces wow. That, wow you know they're all a few minutes long and there's different edits of it different aspects of it so when they find something they like they grab it they put it in the tv show six months later it shows up in my six thousand lines of ascap uh in my statement my ascap statement <laughs> six thousand lines yeah that's how many tv shows i i'm on but wow. this is just a side this is a side thing just to keep me out of trouble you know so I, yeah uh, it does something to keep me occupied in a positive way. But the point I was getting at was um, today I did three tracks in, in about four hours. I did three drum tracks, like high energy drums and um, some African drums. And I did some Asian drums and um, they sound very good. Right. But the point is, is that I'm not a, I'm not expecting anything. I enjoy the process of making the tracks. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. You start out with nothing. At two hours later, it sounds really cool. I yeah. print it. I upload it. I keyword it and metadata. And then I let it go. I forget about it. Mm. Then, you know, nine months from now, <clears throat> it's going to be on some show. And I'll be like, oh, that was fun. I remember that, you know. And it's like 10 million people will hear that track. Oh, so, what? yeah, it's a fun little um a side work because you know the ambient new age is very beautiful it's very deep and so peaceful mm. but it's nice sometimes just to make some noise you know just to get your emotions off your chest you know just to do something dramatic and mm. thing worldly you mm. know just mm. like, just kind of get that energy through you yeah you know like do yep. some rock music or some comedy music or yep you know something silly like latin dramedy it's a lot of fun do 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 you know like desperate housewives and uh married with children and all that those kinds of shows you know yeah yeah big bang theory those kinds of that's called dramedy yeah comedy because it's it's comical but it's also uh, dramatic it's like yeah. is, it, is it are they serious no no they're not serious oh maybe they are serious you know it goes back <laughs> and forth yeah. so it's a lot of fun to do that and i guess my point though is how i got here in that work is i always wanted to do big film scores you know right. original, yeah you know, original music and I worked at that for years, but I could never make any progress. And because I live in Connecticut and I don't live in Hollywood and I don't know the right people and blah, mm. blah, blah. But when the library thing started getting bigger, I said, well, wait a minute. Mm. I could probably be heard by just as many people. Mm. I won't. I wouldn't. My name wouldn't be famous as a film composer, but I would be in front of just as many listeners and I mm. would 
add to their enjoyment just as much as the guy that scores Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the most importantly, it's doable. This yeah. is something I can do. Yeah. I can crank out endless tracks from right here in Reading, Connecticut, and they are used on television all around the world. Wow. So, so that's an example of being practical. Mm, See, mm. I didn't go, well, if I can't be a big film scorer, then I'm not going to do it at all. I'm going to take my marbles and go home and, <laughs> be, and I'd be all bitter about the film industry, you know, oh, yeah. it's not fair, blah, blah, blah. No, yeah. you just make lemonade. You make <laughs> lemonade. Well, life gives you lemonade. But, but in a way, in a way, my life is much more blessed because... I don't have the directors breathing down my neck with the time pressure and no, Paul, we don't like it. You got to make it more jingly. And this part needs to be more stringly. And this part needs to be more bubbly and oh, they'll drive you crazy. And it all has to happen like in an hour from now, because the music is the last thing that's done in a yeah. film yeah. and the pressure is intense. Yeah. It's really intense. Yeah. I don't want that pressure. Yeah. yeah. So I don't have that. See, I, I don't have to make this music. That's what's fun about it. You know, I, yeah. I, my royalties are so high. I don't need to do anything actually anymore, yeah. but yeah. I like making music. So, yeah. you know, it's yeah. fun, yeah. but it's yeah. fun. It's even more fun because I don't have a pressure, yeah. you know, like, oh, Paul, we need to do it tomorrow. It has to be done. <laughs> That's no fun. <laughs> Here's what I've got. You can either take it or leave it. That's kind of basically what it is. And then. Yeah. And they take it. Yeah. They, and like they take it. it. I'm, yeah. I'm one of the best composers in my agency and they sure. know, they know that I always deliver very high quality tracks. You know, they're yeah, yeah. they're they, They've never rejected any of them. Fantastic. Fantastic, Paul. I mean, I mean, you know, you're Paul Angelino. So, you know, I expect nothing less. So that's yeah. amazing. That's great. great well, from see. a great golfer, you wouldn't expect less. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> you, had, you had me there. You had me there. Good, good work, good work. And to think you were a bit nervous about that part, you aced it. <laughs> That's good. Okay, all right. Now, I can see something behind you in, in the setup there, and I think it is what I think it is. Uh, are they the precious Grammy Awards? Yeah. They are precious in a way because, um, you know, when I started in New Age uh, in 87, mm. just given out the first New Age Grammy to Andreas Volenweiter. He was a harpist from Switzerland. And, you know, back then you had to be on a big label and you had to be a big star selling mm. millions of records. And then, mm. you know, you could be in that pipeline where you might get a Grammy nomination, you might win a Grammy. And so I watched that, you know, Enya would win often because she's oh. amazing. She's oh. so good. And she was the biggest seller mm. of all time in New Age. And I would watch that and go, wow, that's really beautiful. I don't think that I would ever achieve that because, you know, I, I'm I'm here outside of that inner sanctum of the big record labels. Mm. I was on little small, you know, mom and pop labels. Um and just trying to build my little career. Mm. And so it it meant even more to me to get a nomination and then get another nomination and then win that year mm. was really very Cinderella at the ball kind of experience, you know. Mm. It was very special. Mm. The amazing thing is it coincided with the birth of my second daughter, who is an ama baby, who Wow. Yeah, who came into the world because of Amma's Sankalpa. Mm. Uh, Amma gave us her blessing for us mm. to have a baby. She did it on February 20th wow. of 2015. The mm. due date was February 20th of 2016. Mm. So it, there was proof that it was Amma. And we were both older. You know, I'm 66 now and mm. my wife was older. So the odds were very much against us even having wow. a baby, let alone yeah being a back date so but but i all happened i won the grammy and then 12 days later juliana joy was born so that Ooh. february of 16 was uh my feet didn't really touch the ground for about three months it was really something and of so, course, i i i owe it all 
I mean, obviously, I did the hard work to prepare the soil, the yeah, fertile, yeah. but I believe I received Amma's grace there in both mm. of those 100%. experiences. 100%. Yeah, but Amma Amma teaches this, which ties into our next big thing discussion. Amma teaches this that yes, the grace of God can very much can very well do what we would say is a miracle. It can change your life completely in an, an amazingly beautiful way, just mm. like that. Yes, it can. Mm. But in order to invoke that, we need to do the work of preparing our lives to to make our lives hospitable so that grace can enter conducive to grace conducive to grace yeah so in other words if you if i know that ama may show up at my front door anytime <laughs> like at 10 o'clock tonight mm. the house is is in decent shape mm. you know what i mean it's never too disheveled because she yeah. may appear any time and i have to be ready i have to be able to do puja i have yeah. to you know the puja room has to be organized yeah. you know there has to be flowers and you know right so this is what we're saying is um hard work creates luck mm. you know hard work preparation creates the environment in which grace can flow in mm. in which blessings can manifest now the tricky part where people fall down is nobody can guarantee the grace is going to come in. Nobody, nobody can tell you when and how mm. it will come in. It might mm. not come in mm. and don't hold me responsible because I'm not the goddess. I'm simply a devotee. Yes. So I'm just a child. So I don't know when the grace is going to flow and when it's not mm. going to flow, but mm. I do know that if mm. I don't prepare, mm. it cannot enter. If I'm laying in bed 20 hours a day, staring at the ceiling, grace is not going to enter not in. Yeah. What kind of a vessel is that? Yeah. You know, how am I going to be able to do anything yeah. good for the world? Yeah. That's fantastic. In that way. So, yeah, that's, that's, um, this is what Amma is teaching us. And, you know, it's nothing new. Obviously, the, the, the Christians say the same thing. The, the Muslims say all the great religions, the Buddhists, they all say the yeah. same thing. It's just, you know, a little different depending on the culture and the nation and the history and the traditions, you uh, know. Yeah. And, and your own, you know, preferences to... to yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So the people have predilections, you know, they're more comfortable with this way of looking at it. Mm, mm. And other people are more comfortable with this way. Yeah. But um, the important thing is that you have a way, you have yeah. a path. You have a sadhana, you have spiritual practice. Yeah. Everyone needs to have spiritual practice. Yeah. Uh, everyone needs to meditate a little in the morning and night. Mm -hmm. They need to do some chanting, some bhajan, some devotional singing, yeah. whatever whatever part works for them. You know, yes. some people yeah. love working out. Some people yeah. love, they love their exercise. That's great. Mm -hmm. Use it as a sadhana, spiritual practice. Absolutely. Add mantra, add mantra to the exercise. Now it's, Three times more powerful. The vibration goes up, 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 up. Yeah. 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 So, yeah that's, yeah, that's what I'm all about. 100%. No, that's great. And interestingly, that's what I'm all about as well. So I think there's a lot of synergy there. You'll be very happy to know that I take my spiritual sadhana very, very seriously. And so every morning there's a set routine uh, that includes prayer, japa, meditation, and reading of of, of nice, scriptures. Nice. So, uh, and me and my wife were both very, very much on that spiritual seeker uh, path mm -hmm. and, it's so uh, beautiful it's, for your for your marriage you know because you have god at the center of your marriage so yeah yeah there's a, a, a grounding uh purity and oneness there which okay. helps you work through any problems that you may have you know or life life is going to bring you ups and downs but yeah yeah you always have your practice to yeah. comfort you and guide you of course we read scripture together Oh yes. yeah, I, I'm a huge reader. I, I'm always reading spiritual books, and That's I awesome. hardly read any other kinds of books. I just find <laughs> it a waste of mental space, you know, because it it puts negative thoughts in your head. Mm -hmm. but, and, uh, and that is something I've learned to to really guard the mind and and just be in charge of what goes in. And yeah. once I've uh, once I've been able to do that well. It's like, okay, I am switched on. I am exactly focusing on what I need to focus. My mind is pure, ready, clear, alert, and, and not sort of 
you know, colliding with a whole heap of other unnecessary stuff. But it takes practice, you know, it takes a lot of practice. So, yeah, indeed, mm. indeed. So that's fantastic. Great to, great to hear. In fact, yesterday, on Tuesday nights, we have a class, a, a, a guru of ours who lives in Perth. It's about four hours from Melbourne. He takes a virtual class. And we were, uh, last night, discussing about um, Parvati's journey to attain Lord Shiva. And, oh, yeah. and, and I, I didn't story. know that's a great story. And I didn't know that story. So the trials and the tribulations, it was just so inspiring. She was so single pointed and so clear. Yeah. Uh, it, was, yeah. it was it was fascinating to, to hear that. Very inspiring. So great. So that's had a great influence. Uh, I can see in your work, you know, I think so bhakti, grace, joy. I think all of that ties in to that. I like the word bhakti a lot. So for me, devotion is a big thing. I have a, a, a concert that is uh, titled Bhakti Varsha, which is Reign of, of Devotion. Nice. Reign, reign of Bhakti. And uh, so I, I love that word a lot. And I believe that's where the Grammy journey uh, began. Uh, in yeah, Japan. it did. Amazingly. It's a wild story. So um, the 15, I released the Bhakti album and we first encountered Amma in New York City at the Javits Center, one of her programs, and because a singer of mine had introduced me to her, a young lady oh. was coming to the studio, and she was an Amma devotee, and she was dropping oh. the breadcrumbs, and she said, oh, you know, Amma's coming, why don't you come to New York? So we went down there, <laughs> and we just loved it, you know, the, the, there was just such a beautiful, blissful aura mm. of presence all of the devotees are all sweet and and ama's presence is just remarkable you can feel yeah. it from about a mile away yeah and um, and so this is so cute so because we didn't understand the process we didn't get in line to get a token and it was getting late and we had to go home so we went on the side and i, I had the bhakti album and i said to a devotee i said would you mind would you mind handing this to ama and he said okay and, <laughs> and so you know, people are always giving her things, you know, yeah. and she she touches it and she blesses it. And then she turns around and hands it to the attendant. And so Amma did that. She yeah. touched the box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In my heart, I believe that this was started this whole ball rolling, because next thing I know, I had just joined the academy that year. Right. Like, 15. 15. Oh, wow. And okay. So I, my very first submission got yeah. nominated. Yeah, I, people, people were like, "Who is this guy? <laughs> Where did he come from? Wow. How is this possible? Yeah, how is yeah. this possible?" And I said, "Well, Amma touched my CD." <laughs> and you know, they said, "Who is Amma?" <laughs> and I said, "Well, you should find out." Oh, it's such a amazing. It's so interesting, Paul. It's very funny because I woke up this morning. It's actually really spooky. I woke up this morning thinking I'm a first-time voting member. What are the odds <clears throat> of me getting nominated? Like I was just, I was just thinking, mm, slim, but yeah, I'll ride the odds. And then you, you come and say, "Hey, <laughs> have a well, debate." Yeah, but I don't want to create a false expectation. Of you know, course, I, of course, of course. I, I tell this story because it it was completely astounding to me. Yeah, it is. I, it is. I, I was completely astounded. And then what happened the following year was even more astounding. Obviously, the with the baby blessing and yeah, you know, well. Yeah, my wife at the time, she said, listen, we're going to India. We're going to ask Amma for a baby blessing. And if it doesn't work, that's it. I give up. And I said, well, that's a plan. <laughs> I said, well, that that sounds like a reasonable plan. Next thing you know, we're on our way to, to Kerala. Yeah. And we're, we're kneeling in front of Amma and saying, baby, please. And she looks at my wife and, and she's like, Yes, immediately. And then she looks at me and she, she, she the, her eyes open, that questioning, like, are you sure? Are you sure you want another baby? Because she knows I had a, a little some difficulties with my first daughter. And I kind of I kind of went, yeah, I'm sure. But, you know, she, I, you can't lie to her. She knows that you're you have some fear. You have some reservation. But yeah. it was enough for her because she goes, OK. And the flowers come on our heads and the apple goes in our head. Go yeah. eat that down by the beach together. Yeah. And that was February 20th of 2015. The due date was February 20th of 2016. And then that is just, that's you know, just then the, the Grace album won. Then I made 
an album for Amma in gratitude for all this. I made yeah. Amma devotional songs to the Divine Mother, which mm. the whole album I created specifically just as a as an offering. Offering to her, yeah. As that a, is so a wonderful. gratitude. That is so wonderful. Uh, that is so wonderful, Paul. Man, yeah, I mean, we could. Uh, I mean, I, I'm like deeply immersed in this conversation right now because it is just. Yeah, it, it is. It is doing exactly what uh, works for me. So thank you, thank you for that. Um, okay, I, I would like. I'd like to say one other thing about Please. the Grammy Please. process is. Please. Um, obviously, it's the only award that everybody knows, and it's it's quite <laughs> quite it's quite significant for musicians because there's no other award that people mm, you know, know about yep. this. So it's it's the award. And because of that, there is a lot of egoic competition and, mm. you know, um, me, 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 and all mm. that stuff, mm. which is can be very dangerous spiritually. Mm. However, I have to say that the, the award has helped me reach millions of more people Mm. with my kind loving gentle music which mm. is my life's work and mm. and it's where i pour all my divine love into mm. in mm. the hopes that it can comfort the hearts of suffering people 100 and 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 the award has helped it helped my career tremendously uh Hopefully. quite a quantum a quantum shift since the win it helped me to to reach so many more people yeah and so for me, that justifies and more than justifies all the uh, political yep. egoic um, yep. type energy that goes around anything highly competitive. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. No, it's a good that's point. How just, that's how I justify it to myself. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's a good point. It's a good point, and it is very easy to get sucked into that. But thankfully, due to some you know spiritual Vedantic sort of uh, ground that I'm on. Uh, I'm able to articulate my purpose, which is to spread joy and inspiration to all like-minded people. And that's where I get my fulfillment from. So I right. am constantly reminding myself that, mate, this is not an ego trip. This is about fulfilling your purpose. Uh, and it, you, you're doing it as an offering to God. Uh, right. To, so, yeah. so uh, but it, it, I need constant reminding. I'll tell you that, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a slippery slope. It, it yeah. tries to, it sucks you in, you know. And, yeah. And you, it, yeah, but... If you keep that ground, you'll be fine because yeah. that's exactly you said it exactly exactly right. As long as the work is serving Dharma, mm. it's a dharmic activity. Mm. If it becomes just egoic, you mm. know, fulfillment, know. oh look at me, blah blah, you know, then it's a danger, it's it's a negative. But yeah. for you and I, it's just part of our dharma, you know. Absolutely. What what good as the Gama would say, you don't light a lamp and put it under a bush. You know, you want to shine the light. It's not going to help anybody if you put it in a closet, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we we all start out making this music for ourselves, for our own awakening, our own comfort, our own mm -hmm. healing. Mm -hmm. And then as we get more skillful and as we awaken, we realize, oh, this music can be very useful for other people. <laughs> I can I can have a satsang. I yeah. can invite people to satsang. Yeah. Yeah. And I can lead this satsang and yeah. I can help people. People are suffering. This world is yeah. full of suffering souls. And yeah. this music is so helpful to them. Yeah. I mean, I've had letters. It's such an honor. People write me and they say, oh, Paul, I'm dying. And I'm listening to your music around the clock. You're the only person that I'm listening to as I'm dying. Now, what an honor is that to be with someone at the time of their death like being with them at the time of their birth it's the sacred time and if that doesn't affirm the dharmic nature of our work nothing will i mean this is this says it all yeah. what they, what they, time people have, you know especially in western culture death is a terrifying thing which is poorly understood and po poorly ministered to and people are terrified of death so the fact that you can help spiritualize the experience and help uplift it uh, to its rightful sacred place, uh, sacred passage, uh, that's that's a great blessing. 
hundred percent, hundred percent. No, and and what that, you said that means that means more to me than the Grammy Awards. I have to say mm. that that's that's because that's very real. Mm. That's mm. a soul, a soul mm. leaving this plane. Mm. In a you know, and we know from Scripture that the time of death is hugely important. Yeah, you know, it's going Absolutely. to it's going to determine your next birth absolutely you, you have to have an auspicious you want to have an auspicious death you yeah. want to die in the arms of the guru in the arms of the divine yeah. so that you can have an elevated uh birth you know have an auspicious you carry those you carry those yeah. if you so die no, in terror and agony and attachment and you know and suffering yeah. it doesn't bode well for Hundred percent, hundred percent. No, this is a fantastic satsang I'm having right now. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, but I must say, you said something, and I, you know, I'll take the liberty to quickly share my personal experience with with my song because it it started off like that. So I'm an only son, and I'm very close to my parents and to my mum. But while we're close, we certain emotional things we generally don't talk <laughs> about. So when I left home, so I moved to uh, to Melbourne. Australia with my wife and so when I left home uh, she seemed okay but then a few you know a few years or whatever later my dad said look you know I think she's actually struggling um, so I said oh okay right okay so but I still didn't have the thing to to talk to her so I did what musicians do I wrote a song and it was about mm. me leaving home and her and then like you said I realized through the creation that hang on this isn't just about me and her this is actually quite a universal concept and I think I'm, I'm going to generalize it. And then I thought, thought about the scriptures and I thought, hang on, Krishna leaves Vrindavan and never to return. What does Yashoda feel that first night? Right. And, and, and that's, that's the song. I mean, that's the song. It talks about Krishna and Yashoda, but it represents mothers and their adult offsprings when yeah. they, they leave home. So it's a dialogue between the two. And that's how the song became a bit more universal than just me to my mom. Uh, yeah. And so even now in performances at Krishna Tanmashtami, I performed in India and, uh, you know, it's it always been very well received. I think it comes, yeah. you know, I like to think it comes from a good place. So well, you, you are 100% on the right track because we, we work in archetypes in large energies and exactly you want to find those universal archetypes mother and child the beloved love lost love found awakening mm -hmm. uh, divine purpose mm -hmm. discovery of dharma fulfillment of dharma, of dharma. you know mm -hmm. yeah we 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 work in all great artists uh think and and act in archetypes in large mm -hmm. i call a style guide you know <laughs> A style guide. You, you, when you before you started an album, before I started an album, I determine a style guide. Mm. What what who's going to listen to this album? Mm. What are they going to be doing when they're listening? How is it going to serve them? Mm. And I have good answers for all those questions before I even turn on this the studio equipment. Wow. So, um, a lot of artists when we they we start out, it's it's very personal and, you know, it's our own inner. We're working out inner energies, and sometimes we stumble upon the archetype by accident, as it were. You know, we yeah. we realize that everyone has found and lost human love. You know, it, it's, us. it's like, oh, I have a broken heart. Oh, everyone has a broken heart. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're alive, you have a broken heart. Yeah, you have a heart. It has to be broken. <laughs> it has to be broken. It's yeah. only a matter of time. If it hasn't yeah. happened yet, just yeah, wait yeah. a minute. It's going to yeah. happen. Right. Yeah, there's no escaping it. No matter how auspicious your conditions, Rama and Krishna had broken hearts. God incarnate, Jesus, a broken heart, the incarnation of God. Amma, broken heart. When she was a child, she was abused terribly by her own family and her own her own uh, village folk. So um, it's you're so on the track with that. This is what you always want to do is to find the higher universal mm. teaching or the higher universal energy mm. that everyone can connect with. Mm. Yashoda and Krishna, you know, that that uh, Krishna and the gopis, you know, mm. he never comes back to them. Yeah, but they, 
they maintain their devotion. They maintain their bhakti. Maintain yeah. their devotion and they achieve liberation because yes. they were faithful. Yes. Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. In the Bible, 100%. there's a there's a great phrase in the Bible. Um blessed are those that have not seen but yet believe. Mm. That really hits my heart because I've seen, I, I've had the full darshan of the Lord Jesus in waking, not in dreaming, but in waking consciousness, the full blown darshan, like you know, in the Gita when Krishna appears in oh. his universal form yeah. to Arjuna. I've had that experience actually yeah. once. Yeah. But so I have no excuse for not believing, but yeah. but the Lord said, Blessed are those that believe and have not, not seen. seen. You no, know, yeah, they have that innocent faith, even yeah. though they've never they've never seen, they've never had the real full darshan of the Lord. So that that's a that's a beautiful that's uh, fascinating. That is fascinating. Yeah, beautiful saying. Gosh. Oh, so beautiful. This is so good. Uh, I would like to speak about your new project as well, though. Welcome Home, I believe it's called. Collaboration yeah. with uh, Deepak Chopra and Kabir Segal. Third collaboration, if I if I am correct. Uh, uh, fifth. 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 Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Wow. And so tell us about uh, about that. And do, do the three of you share this sort of spiritual energy and, you know, commonality and... <laughs> You know, how, how, how does it work with the three of you? Yeah, we do. I mean, I'm very close to Kabir. Um, I've loved Deepak since I was a young man. His his book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, was a life changer for me. I just I just love that book. I think it's actually one of the most important spiritual books of the last hundred years. Wow. It's very, very useful and mm. powerful and very pure. It's mm. It's just pure boilerplate mm. law of attraction you know it's mm. all founded in the scriptures it's all yeah. founded in in vedanta yeah in veta vedanta non-dual yeah. awareness yeah it's, it's very very authentic yeah but it's been put in words that you know the western person can can receive which is important right mm. another person who does that really well is eckhart tolle his book um a stillness speaks it's just mm. tiny little sutras you know just mm. a few lines mm. Very powerful uh, Advaita Vedanta uh, for the modern man, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we we are students. Uh, so my wife and I we're in the Advaita Vedanta. We're students yeah. of Advaita. And not an so easy we, study. So not an not easy study. Thing is not an easy study. study. But I found yeah. it to be extraordinarily rewarding in its uh, in its foundational thought of of unification. That you know, yeah, everything I everything is Brahman. And it uh, is. It's it's very useful yeah. and very healing and comforting. And once you relax into it, yeah. but so yeah. So um, in 2017, uh, Kabir approached me with this idea of doing the first home project, home where everyone is welcome. Because at mm. that time there was all this uproar about immigrants in America, and we need to mm. shut down the borders and yes. kick out all the illegal immigrants. And we're like, oh my. God, what is the matter with you? It's yeah. like immigration is the foundation of yeah. success. Yeah. A, a country needs three things. It needs young people who want to work and resources and innovation. If it has those three things, the sky's the limit. You can have an increasing uh, quality of life, wonderful prosperity, all boats rising. Mm. But if you kick out the immigrants or you restrict them, you choke off the lifeblood of the country. 100%. You look at look at the Fortune 500, the S&P 500, half the com companies in there were founded by immigrants. <laughs> Guess who founded Google? <laughs> an immigrant, so, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Look at Albert Einstein, an immigrant. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it just, the list goes on and on. The list goes on. The list goes yeah, on. Yeah, so we wanted to push back against this knee-jerk protectionism yeah. you know people get scared they always say they pull in they, they want to hide behind the wagons and you know cower in fear yeah. say, oh no just to, my father came here from greece with nothing uh -huh. kabir's father came here from india with nothing deepak himself came here with nothing he had five dollars in his pocket when he landed at jfk now he's one of the most respected famous people in the world so 100%. look what America can do. You know, it's a fantastic uh, incubator yeah. for yeah. success and prosperity. 
Yeah. But not if you not if you uh, criminalize immigrants and hardworking yeah. people. Yeah. And also, what's ironic about it is, <laughs> hey, hey, limit the immigration, and then they say, oh, we can't get enough workers. We don't have enough workers. And I'm like, oh, excuse me, but aren't you the same people that kicked out the hardworking people who wanted to work, and you told them to go back? To... Come on, it's, it's, a, so it's a... awesome. It's a fire you started. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. started this problem. Yeah. And then the, you know, so of course. anyway, so we, we started that back. That was our first project together. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was wonderful. You know, it was such a joy to get to work with Deepak because he's been a hero of mine since I, you know, since yeah. my 30s. So, yeah. Or late, late 20s. A big person in America yoga spiritual scene you know, uh. in, the, in the american new age scene he's huge he's uh. just like bigger uh. than life you know he has his detractors like anyone who of goes course. up hot you know yeah. there's always haters you know yeah. but he's a beautiful soul and he, the way he is able to unpack for instance Advaita Vedanta in just such an easy conversational way, you know, like that even a child could understand it. It's great the way he does it. And plus, he, he uses the Westerners love of science because mm. Westerners love science. That's their mm. God. You know, mm. oh, if the scientist says it's true, then it has to be true. Yeah, if the yeah. scientist says God exists, then God must exist. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. Well, science has taken the place of God yeah, for yeah. many Westerners. Yeah. They worship logic. They worship computers yeah, and exactly. spreadsheets and mm. rational thinking and blah, blah, blah. Well, very good, but without soulfulness, it's it's all quite meaningless. So um, that was really wonderful. Uh, Kabir is a fantastic, amazing Renaissance man. You know, he's mm. an officer mm. in the Navy. He's a mm. New York Times bestselling author. He's a... Mm. Fortune 500 executive, yeah, <laughs> Grammy wins, and he's a really sweet guy. We yeah, were best yeah. friends. Yeah, we yeah. we we've done a lot of projects together. We have three more Deepak projects in the pipeline. Right, right, wow. Right now, actually, so that will bring it to eight. Oof. Uh, but yeah, Deepak and Kabir are just awesome. Oh, that's yeah. great. Well, I can't I can't wait to. I've I've just started checking uh, the project out. Uh, and I'm, and I'll come back to you after I listen to the whole thing, but I'm sure it's going to be amazing. And so I, I hope it goes far and wide and it deserves nothing less. Um, fantastic. Okay, all right. So look, I mean, I you know I, we could we could talk for ages. We really could. And yeah. uh, you know, but from a podcast perspective, it brings us to the very last question, the question that every guest gets asked. And the answer is very. So I find that very fascinating. So the question, to you is, according to you, Paul, what is the one must have or one non-negotiable for someone to be the next big thing in any field? But we can talk music if you want. Sure. Well, for me, it's what's worked in my own life, which is first to find your bliss. You know, you have to find what really fulfills you in on all levels mentally physically spiritually emotionally uh, uh, what really works for you yeah yeah when you're doing that activity you feel your true self you feel yeah. you are who you're supposed to be who you're meant to be yeah you're, you're aligned with dharma with your yeah. own dharma yeah right? Right. you've discovered your dharma and yeah. you're aligned with it and you're fulfilling it yeah yeah and i think and then to have the innocent faith that it's in god's time how it's going to work out and when mm. leave that up to god you know <laughs> karma yoga right karma yoga. you do the work but you yeah. don't attach to the results you leave the results to krishna god will decide mm. when and where what results you're going to get and you just do your work and you offer it every day. Beautiful result is while you are just doing your quiet work and quiet offering, 
when you don't even realize it's happening yeah. one day you turn <laughs> one day you turn around and there's three grammys on the shelf and you think well, how did that get there or you have a huge royalty statement coming in every month and thousands of pieces of music I, where did that come from because i wasn't focused on the result yeah i was focused on the work yeah I was focused just on doing the best work i can you know Today, I'm making this drum track. I'm not thinking like, oh, I wonder if this is going to be on Survivor, if it's going to be. On... I'm, <laughs> I'm not thinking that. Yeah. I'm thinking, what's wrong with this piece? What can I do to make it better? Yeah. Does Is it good? Is this yeah. good? Are, are my film editors going to want to use this? Is it, does yeah. it, is it, is it working? Yeah. Am I doing my job? What am I missing? Yeah. What am I missing? Well, yeah. I think that that track is a little loud there let's turn that down and well, maybe this is a little more here and let's, uh -huh. let's do, 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 do. so you're you're lost in the work you're doing the work right. right yeah and so i think for me that that that's what's worked for me and i've seen that work very well for many of my colleagues uh -huh. it works look for kabir and and deepak they're very hard workers they're always working and doing some project. And then they have 10 other projects lined up, you know, for tonight at two o'clock. It's like crazy. Yeah, they, they're they astounding, the amount of work that they do. Yeah. But there's a humility about them. Mm. You know, they're, they're just quietly going about their work, doing their thing. Mm. And they're doing karma yoga with mm. bhakti, you know. Mm. Bhakti yoga, it's karma yoga. You know, all yoga is one at the mm. end. Right. There's really only one yoga union. Yep. yep. There's oneness. So I think that's and also flexibility is very important because, like, for example, you remember my story about the film composing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So see, if I wasn't flexible, if I was rigid, like, oh, I have to score to picture. Yes. I have to get the I gotta get the hundred thousand dollar contract, the orchestra, score to picture. That's the only way that I accept it. If mm. I had done that. I would have had nothing. I would have ended up with nothing in that work. Mm. Instead, I said, you know what? I don't care how it happens. Mm. I don't mind doing it with library tracks. See, back then, people looked down on library composers. They're like, oh, Paul, you're doing library music. Well, you know, that's because you you weren't good enough to get the big film score. And yeah. I'd be like, oh, you're right. You're right. I'm not very good. I'm just, a, I just do my work. You're right. Nod my head. But now I'm making a lot more money than they are. They don't have you're, any job. You're, you're, <laughs> you're laughing, laughing your way to the bank. <laughs> I'm laughing my way to success, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. flexibility is important, too. When I was a teenager, I said to God, you know, I really don't care what I do in music, but I really would like to be in music. Yeah, so yeah. You, you figure it out. Give me the, yeah. I don't know anything. I'm an idiot. You figure it out. So God sent me to the symphony orchestra, and then he sent me to the jazz orchestra, and then he sent me to the new age music, then he sent me to the studio. Yeah. So it's constantly changing because yeah. that's where the opportunity was for me to grow and, yeah. and become who I was supposed to become. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, flexibility is very important. It's an interesting combination because there's a tenacity there. In other words, you know, you, you really stick with it as long as, your heart is telling you it's the right thing to stick with it. But at some mm. point you might have to say, well, you know, I think we need to move over this way yeah. a little. You know, yeah. Yeah. We'll I, think, focus our I think being flexible on the means to the goal. Yeah. Right? On the details. Yeah, yeah. 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 You have a big picture thing like, Hey, I just, I want to be in music. I love yeah. music. It makes me happy. God, you figure it out. Where, yeah, where, yeah. Do I fit, where do I fit best? Yes. Yes. And so I try to teach young people that, you know, and also to have a, a plan like five years, 10 years, don't mm. expect anything to happen in six mm. months or a year. you got to have like a five year plan, mm. a 10 year plan. You mm. know, you have to really be patient and do the work mm. before you even know if you're on the right path. Right. Because mm. it could it could take years to get the feedback that yeah. you need to yeah. know, like, well, you know, am I making the right kind of new age records or am I making the right kind of film music? Because you get the feedback, you know, you see like, oh, people really like this. They don't like this as much. So let's make more of this. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, it's a combination of being very idealistic and devoted, but also being practical. Yeah. You know, yeah. God gives us both parts of our brain, right? We have a creative side 
We have a rational side. Left, left, right. Use yeah. both of them. Use yeah. both the parts of your brain. I see so many artists, they they seem to be all running on 50% power. You know, they're using, <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. all creative. They're so creative and so artsy, but they can't understand the business. They don't even yeah. know what mechanical royalties are. And then there's other people who are so focused on the money and on, you mm. know, competition that they're like cold-blooded killers. And, you know, it's like, there's no, it's scary. It's so, but why not put the two together? Mm. Both parts, we got two and, parts of it. And I mean, Vedanta is a lot about that head and heart integration, isn't it? Yeah. You know, coming together, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. Very true. I think that's <laughs> the that's the key. Well, there are a lot of young artists that are doing that. It is encouraging. Yeah. Uh, I think it's better than it was before. In the old days, that was very common. You know, artists was just so creative that they get taken advantage of on the business side, mm. you know, because they had no business sense. Mm. Or if they had the business sense, they didn't have the talent to, to make it happen. So, but there are a lot of young artists who are putting it all together now. And that's that's very encouraging. I like yes. to see that. So that means we can look forward to the times ahead where all of yeah. this uh, manifests. So thank you. Thank you so, so much, Paul. This has been an absolute pleasure. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I hope you did too. Oh, so thank yes, you. Very much. Very much. Thank you, Sri Ram. Namaste. 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 Hang around for a little bit of offline banter, but I'll sure. be in touch soon. Thank you. Great.